Hey guys, today's video is going to be on music college, like what it's like, uh, the different avenues you can take, and if so if you're like in high school wondering if you should go, if you've got another degree and you want to go back and get a music degree, something like that. Uh, this should give you uh, maybe a warning at some level, but also, you know, just like what, what you can expect. So there are several different music degrees you can get in the world. Uh, there is like a Bachelor of Arts in Music, there's a Bachelor of Music, BM, so you BA, BM, you can get a Bachelor of Music Education, BME, bachelors that focus on jazz studies, you can get bachelors that focus on classical music, you can get them that focus on recording arts, or you can get them that are like focus on musicology, and it really depends on what you want to do with it, which one you should get, like any degree would. So I have a Bachelor of Arts in Music, um, I did that one mostly because I switched majors basically my junior year and I had to cram an entire music degree into two years, um, which I did successfully and I took a lot of credits at a time and it was crazy. Um, so I got the smallest degree just because it took the least amount of time. The BA is good for someone who wants to go on into musicology or music theory or doing something like what I'm doing where I'm just a private teacher. Uh, so. It's, it's a low-level degree. You do learn a lot. You take lessons. You have to pass tests. It's rigorous, but it's like the smallest one. Um, a Bachelor of Music, a BM, is typically a little bit bigger. It's if you want to go on to get a master's in music performance uh, or, you know, a doctorate or something, where it's a little bit, a little bit harder. There's a little bit more requirements. It takes a little bit longer to, to get there. It's, it's, uh, it's a little bit more performance-specific, so it's not really, you wouldn't need that if you didn't want to continue on that for a very performance-based vein. Um, the BME, the Bachelor of Music Education, is if you want to be a band director or a choir director or something. Um, is basically, you get certified to teach in public schools and be a band teacher. If you wanted that, that's why you would go and do the BME. So the BME is typically also a much bigger degree because you have to do the music and the education uh, so that you can work as a licensed public school teacher. So what do you do when you get there? You're gonna have to take theory classes, you're gonna have to take history classes, you're gonna have to take musicology classes, uh, and you're gonna have to take lessons, and you're gonna have to perform in school ensembles. That's like the basic gist of music school. Um, what balance of that you do depends on, again, what type of degree you're getting and what you want to do with it later. Um, but, you know, you could just assume a couple years worth of music theory and music history at a, at a basic level. Whether that's jazz theory or classical theory, jazz history or classical history, depends on your school and, like, what track you're taking. A lot of the time they will let you pick between jazz studies and classical studies. In some schools, classical is required and jazz is an elective. Some schools have, like, a pop commercial music, non-jazz non-classical like third path and it just depends on where you go but essentially it's all going to be the same it's just what the repertoire you're playing is so as far as the lessons go that's probably the most important part to most people because it's how you actually get good at your instrument and when you say oh, I have a music degree people just assume that you're gonna know what you're doing right so when you take the lessons I took two different lessons one from a professor every week and one from a grad student and then you know what lesson I took from what person switched every semester um, sometimes I was taking snare drum from the professor and mallets from the grad student, sometimes it was vice versa, sometimes I was taking timpani lessons, drum set, uh, world percussion, you know, I took a, a big survey of stuff. Basically, the lessons are rigorous, you know, they really make you learn, like not practicing is not an option. So you can plan on practicing for hours, plural, every day, if you want to pass the lessons, because they can straight up fail you and you don't get your degree if you don't do well enough in the lessons. Uh, on top of the, the grade that they give you, at, at most music schools there are benchmarks that you have to meet in order to move on to the next level. So um, at CU in Boulder they call them proficiencies, I think that's the standard term, but you can let me know in the comments if you've called it something else. But um, I had a snare drum proficiency, a keyboard you know, mallet proficiency that I had to pass in order to graduate. And so if I got a bigger degree, the Bachelor of Music, I would have had to do another keyboard and uh, maybe a timpani or a drum set, like there were options, but um, I had to do two more, and so obviously I was time crunched, like I said, I think, earlier. I did my degree really weird, so I went for the small one. Uh, if you had a Bachelor of Music Education, you also have to take like classes in strings and uh, winds, and if you're not a percussionist, percussion, so that you get all, you know, cover all the bases. So there's a lot of, of learning of instruments you have to do, and you have to prove certain levels at those instruments. Typically you also have to play in an ensemble uh, sort of so that you get experience playing music not just taking lessons and being in a practice room. 
And so on top of all the practicing you have to do for your lessons, you have to be good at the music for your ensemble. So I was always in like a concert wind band. Um, you could audition into different levels of that, and there was also like, uh, you know, string-based classical orchestras you could be in, and there were jazz combos and jazz big bands, and I think every school has some version of these things. Um, some schools will also have like R&B funk ensembles and, uh, you know, rock and pop ensembles. That, you know, it's becoming increasingly common to have more variety of ensembles, but you still have to audition into them, and if you really want to be in a big band and you suck at jazz, you're going to get stuck in the low-level classical concert band anyway. So it's always not really up to you, it's up to can you audition into everything. And while we're talking about auditions, the auditions for just getting into music school, there's a number of ways that can go. Um, but like the lowest level of audition is, there's typically uh, just a few things you have to play and then they basically let anybody in who can barely do them. Uh, but then they're really going to hammer you your first year. They're going to take your tuition money, but their goal is to get you to quit, right? So if an audition for a music school looks really easy, it's probably going to get harder real quick later once they let you in. The other school of thought is to make the audition really hard and then only take the people who are actually good in. Um, and then they're going to sort of do everything they can in their power to get you to graduate because they can't afford to lose you from a numbers perspective. Um, and you're going to get more help, but it's really hard to get in. And then there's some places in the middle, but uh, when you're in school, audition, 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 it's like, that's the thing. And especially if you're getting that more performance-based degree, when you start to get uh, into the upper levels, your lessons will focus on auditioning for things after you graduate, whether it be classical orchestras or being a side man in a band or whatever it is you're focused on. So um, it's all a sort of a big continuing audition process from getting into the school to getting into the ensemble to working on ways to get into a real band and make money, which, you know, later if that ever happens. So if you think you're pretty good at your instrument and you just want to play like pop music, R&B, rock, metal, um, gospel, some kind of genre that doesn't require a lot of background knowledge and isn't really competitive for lucrative, high-paying spots, um, you probably don't need to go to music school and you'd be better served getting some other degree as, as a fallback. Um, if you want to play in a classical orchestra, these days to get into a, like a paying one, it, it almost requires having a Master of Music degree. Uh, you have to work really hard and you work on a lot of excerpts and so you will need the degree. Nobody can just stroll into like the you know, Philadelphia Orchestra and, and get a job. Like, that doesn't happen. So you need to work a lot, and if you don't have the degree, you will not understand the level that is required. If you want to teach band in a school, you have to have the education degree in order to be able to do it. Even though I have a music degree, I'm not teacher certified for public school, so, you know, that's obvious. Um, if you want to be, like, a music theorist, a composer, uh, a musicologist, you, know, you can take the smaller degree, but you still need that degree and probably an additional you know, master's degree to be taken seriously in your field. If you want to get into uh, being a, like, recording legend, uh, session guy, you know, playing for big names, um, sometimes you can do that without a degree, but sometimes it helps to go to a college like Berkeley or Musicians Institute that is more, you know, focused on that and, and try to get your foot in the door. And it's, at that point, it's like, who do you know, kind of. But also, you're getting the skills to make sure that you're actually at the level you think you're at. So um, so there are reasons you would go to music school. Uh, if you just like it, I really would suggest at least double majoring um, and getting a degree that you can do on the side because almost every professional musician that I know has a side job. They have a day job. And if it's working at Burger King, it's not going to support your music habit as well as if it's like um, something actually that pays well. I mean, music happens at night, so if you have a day job, it could be like being a lawyer or a doctor or what you know something interesting and lucrative, and you could still be a musician on the side as a hobby. Um, if you want to be like a full-time touring musician, uh, a lot of those people they still have to have other jobs in between tours to make ends meet. So it's the it's very difficult you know to make it as a musician, as I think everyone knows. So. Um, if you're just getting a music degree to be a pro musician, uh, sometimes you might need it, but I don't think it's always necessary, and I don't think it's the only degree you should get. Let's just say that. So basically, if you want to go to music school, that's cool. Uh, if I haven't dissuaded you enough from this, 
Um, but the, my tips would be, you know, pick out a few different ones and audition for them. If you get into all of them, that's cool. But if you don't get into your first choice, you know, you kind of want to have some backups. Um, and I would say really study what it is they're saying in the audition material packet that they give you. You know, you can kind of tell what they want based on the wording. Like, there's this one school that I helped a kid audition for. For trumpet players, let's say, they were like, play two jazz tunes in contrasting styles and play us a major scale. Super easy. So they were obviously looking to acquire lots of trumpet students. Um, then for drummers, it was like, be able to play five different styles of beat, give us four different tunes at contrasting tempos and styles off of this list of prescribed tunes, be able to like both play time and solo over them. Um, then you had to be able to play five or six different rudiments. And the sort of the implication of that was, we do not need drummers, we don't want you to come in here, right? So you kind of have to read between the lines in the audition materials. So if you think that the audition looks especially ridiculous, it might be because they really don't want to accept you. If you, that's your like number one, I want to go to their school, you got to realize they're not going to accept okay. They're looking for crushing it and you need to practice really, really hard on that stuff and make sure it is up to snuff. How do you know that? Well, it'd be really good to take some lessons. If you have not taken private lessons before going to music college, you probably will not do very well. Even if you are self-taught, if you want to go to music school, take a few lessons and really check, okay, is what I'm doing for this audition material at the level that they think I would even be considered to get in? Um, so uh, the audition process, even if it's the low bar audition, you still have to be able to do the things uh, at some basic level. So uh, really prepare. You can never be too good for an audition because you'll have nerves or they might throw a curveball at you. And... You really just want to be over-prepared, that's all I can say. Okay, um, I did not audition super well when I was going around to music schools. I did not get into my first choice. I got into my second choice, but I think only because they uh, needed percussionists to fill out their bands and I snuck in uh, like uh, by just circumstance. I did not audition ex especially well and I could have done better and you should shoot for doing better. Cool, so if you have any questions about music college or whatever, let me know down below and I'll try to answer them. But uh, this is probably an extra long-winded overview of like what I experienced and what you can expect. So thanks for watching guys. Check out my book, Encyclopedia Rudimentia, which I would not have been able to write probably without my college degree.